Hey everybody, it's Josh Dorkin with BiggerPockets.com. Today we've got Jonathan Rivera, real tech guy, here with you. Jonathan can be found on BiggerPockets at BiggerPockets.com slash users slash real tech guy. And you've got uh, your own site and of course you've got the famous real estate group, don't you? The real estate referral group dot com. Yeah, that's that's where I spend 80% of my time. Fantastic. Tell us really quick about the group. Uh, well, basically what we are is a board where uh, an agent needs to refer a deal. They post it up on our wall. We find them an agent to refer to and, and they share in the commission. I don't make any money on that. I'm just providing a service kind of like bigger pockets. Oh, nice. Nice. Good plug. Good plug. <laughs> <laughs> so... Jonathan is a real estate agent. Uh, well, you're you're an agent, right? Did I totally blow? I, I'm no, I'm still licensed. Okay. Yeah, I used to be a realtor from '04 to 2010, and I finally got some balls and left uh, the board of realtors. Nice. So Jonathan is a former agent, kind of. <laughs> no, I'm actually a broker, as a matter oh, you're a of fact. Okay. I own, yeah, I own my my brokerage. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so Jonathan is a broker, uh, an investor. And uh, definitely one of the more tech savvy guys out there. So we're going to kind of cover the full gamut in as quick a time as we can here. Um, let's talk real estate investing. I know you are a buy and hold guy now. Um, you started. You were. You used to do rehabs and flips. Um, let's talk a little bit about that stuff. Um, how'd you get started as as the the flipper? Well, it it was it went around. So I started out uh, with the idea. I had the uh, Carlton Sheets no money down system, you know. Sure. And I, I'm one of those people that said, "Hey, I'm going to put these pages to use." Right. And uh, I got in with the, the strategy of I'm going to get some properties and I'm going to hold them. About a million dollars into the portfolio, which took us about ten months, I realized that we were out of loans, out of money, and I had to do something different. So we started flipping out of them, and I learned about flipping at that time so sure. then we got into the rehab market gotcha gotcha now you and I had, have spoken before and and I know you've it hasn't been the smoothest of paths it, in terms of the the entire uh, rehab uh, lifeline right so so tell us maybe a little bit about what happened you know I know you had some challenges and and hopefully maybe you can teach some lessons that some other folks don't get uh, into the same trouble that I, I understand you might have gotten into well, I mean, the first thing, and I think this is a lesson that I'm sure the people of Bigger Pockets already know, is you're going to run out of money at some point, you know. So be quite aware of that and try to buy within your means. If you're doing creative stuff, just make sure you got a cushion. Right. But we we got stuck when properties, you know, we were selling at a good time. So properties took less than 30 days to sell, and we used to make them beautiful. I mean, we were redoing old places and making them immaculate. And... Huh. I'll share. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and share. <laughs> <laughs> Hesitation. Okay, I had here to think about it for a second, right? So, uh, you know, we got into this situation in our own backyard where this one property that was immaculate, one of our best rehabs, sure. took um, 60 days to sell in a, in a market that should have been like 15 days. And it got weird. So then I said, hey, this is getting kind of crazy. And I decided to invest outside of my area because I thought I was going to make, you know, I was going to make a killing elsewhere. Right. And I took a huge beating there. Okay. And and then at that point it was like, okay, flipping is no longer working. Right. Uh it just took me a little too long to realize that because I I took all my liquid cash and kept putting it back in and then I was in a pinch. Gotcha. So so what exactly happened? You said you invested out of your normal market. Um was this at a tremendous distance? I'm guessing you had, you tried to flip out of town, so to speak. Ninety miles away, I took my crew over there. I put them up for the week, let them you know just work on the property for the week. They got it done. Yeah. We could not sell the place, and uh, I ended up having to use it as a rental. But it was it was a sticky situation because we ended up actually. You know, it was one of those where we the mortgage was behind, so we negotiated with the bank and got a payment structure set up, and we were renting for less than, than we were actually paying on it, and that's when the crap hit the fan. Right, right. Now, wh what would you attribute to uh, the inability to, to turn it so uh, as quickly as you expected? Is that because you didn't have a full understanding of, of that local market? I didn't know anything about that market, yeah. dude. I was just taking a risk because my market wasn't working. And, 
you, you know how the dip happened. You oh, yeah. saw it. Oh, yeah. Right. So the dip <laughs> went right really quick. So all the valuations were coming in that the place was worth 180, yeah. but things you couldn't even sell the thing for 90. Right. So yeah, I was in a sticky situation gotcha. and that that's where I took a big hit. Okay. Okay, so so lesson for those people who might be watching, know your market, know your market, know your market. I mean, if you're if you're investing somewhere that you don't understand, you know, what what happened to Jonathan can very well happen to you very easily. Uh, Absolutely, man. It's scary. Stay stay in the areas you know. Yeah. Um, you know, gambling, come on. Go yeah. do that in Vegas. There you go. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So let's fast forward uh to today. You're a buy and hold guy. Um what's your what's your bread and butter? Well, um right now I I have some apartments which is my bread and butter and then I have my ghetto rentals. Which is where you know you buy a thirty thousand dollar property, sure. you put a few dollars into it because the standards are living are different in these areas. So yeah. you put a few bucks into it, and now you know your cash flowing is thro throwing off three hundred, four hundred bucks a month. It's okay, you know that right. is all right by me. Sure, sure. And sometimes it's it's a challenge investing in those areas. I I personally have invested in some difficult neighborhoods. Um, I am worse for wear after <laughs> after those experiences, but you know some people do tend to do really really well in those neighborhoods, and uh, you, you just really have to have a good understanding of of how to manage in those in those particular areas because it is a challenge. There are lots of difficulties that will come up. Look, uh, the thing is, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not for everybody because the you know the neighborhoods that I'm talking about are rough. Yeah. You know, and, and it's a block-by-block block basis in yeah. these places, and it could be dangerous. So you got to have a certain demeanor. Yep. And the other thing is that that was the biggest lesson that I got, and my, my father-in-law taught this to me, and I'm grateful for it, was humility. Yeah. You know, these are people that you're dealing with. Don't treat them like crap. Like, right. I treat these people with the biggest respect, right? right? I know that they're working every day to pay my mortgage right. and I'm grateful to them for that and I treat them well and in turn they treat me well. Yeah. Yeah, that's I mean that's definitely the golden rule. I think not only for that uh for for properties in difficult areas but also, you know, across the board if you you, you treat your tenants like gold, um you're going to gain a reputation. If you treat them like crap, well, you know, you're going to get it back tenfold. Um, well, speaking of crap, here's how my my uh, father-in-law helped teach me humility. Sure, he had me cleaning the lift stations, <laughs> and and saying, "Hey, you know, do the dirty work so that you can appreciate what these people go through to pay the rent." Right, right. Wow. Well, you know, you, you learned it, and now you're 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 doing it. So I guess good for your dad, right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I had a rich dad, poor dad situation. You know? <laughs> nice, nice. Um. Well, let's you know. There's there's a lot we want to cover, and not not a ton of time. So, I I want to turn a little bit to to marketing. I think a lot of people are hungry for marketing. That's kind of one of those topics that's just on the tip of everyone's tongue. It's a lot of places you can go, a lot of things you can do. Um, you're one of those guys who gets it, who understands um, social media. Um, and there's a there's a new uh, entrance in the neighborhood, right? There's this whole Google Plus thing out there. Um, I thought maybe we can talk for a second. I know you're not an expert. There are no experts. And if somebody says they're an expert today, you know, two weeks into launch, well, you know, don't listen to them because they're wrong. Um, but, you know, let's let's talk really quick about, say, Google Plus, Facebook, Twitter, um, using these these platforms. Yeah, we could talk about bigger pockets, but we don't need to. But, you know, let's talk about these other things. How how can investors, how can folks be using these tools um, to build their investing businesses? Do you, you know, do you have any tips just off, off the bat to, to get them started? Yeah, I think that there's a lot of misinformation out there. I want to start right there. Okay. And I want to just uh, focus people on, you know, of course, thank you for introducing me to your tribe. And I hope to bring to them the message that, you need to look at who you are listening to and see if they're doing the things you're doing because, of course, they can tell you how social media or how this other thing is great because they're trying to get a job in corporate America or they're doing consulting. But, you know, you and me, we're, we're selling houses or we're, we're doing rentals. So yeah. take that with a grain of salt, what you learn from these people. And 
the the most basic thing the most basic thing I can say is get leads right set up capture pages have a purpose to what you're doing if you're trying to build up a list of investors then you're obviously going to want to offer some information about foreclosures or about rehabbing think about the topics that will attract your target market and then build a funnel around them and capture the lead because right. social media is superficial yeah and in my opinion and I, I did a video about this a while back but they asked me what the ROI of social media was, right? Yeah. And I said the ROI of social media is like asking me the ROI of my pliers. Right. I mean, th it, there is no ROI on my pliers because sure. they just make my job easier. Right. Now, now, the real thing to think about is lead capture, lead generation, lead nurture, and follow-up yeah. because that's where the money is made. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I was asked the same question. Um, Did you? And my response actually was yes. There's an ROI. Um, social media is a tool. You got to You know, you can't just set up a profile and expect people to come to you. You have to actually, you know, be putting out content that's valuable to people that the people that you're looking for are looking for, right? So, um, and know, I think that, you're a perfect example of of what you're saying here because you just touched on it. Like more than social media. How do you attract people? You attract them through content, okay? Right. Forget about all the, oh, it's so nice to do a 140 character tweet and all right. that. Right. That ain't going to sell a house. Right. That ain't, you know, that ain't going to do any of that. Yeah. Content is your sales force 24-7. Right, right. So in terms of content, then do you, do you think, and, and I'm a strong advocate of, of this, do you think that anybody, any investor should be blogging, should have their own blog? Where they're just writing about what they're doing, they're you know talking about, you know, themselves, their business, and 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 what they're up to. Is that would that be your approach? And then use these other channels to pull people in, propagate the message. Yep. Yeah, I mean, demonstrate your expertise. Like we're talking to people out in the street all the time. We're answering questions all the time. That's our main content, right? Your right. FAQs and things like that. That's your leading force. And then who do you want to connect with? Because like if I want to connect with the investors, I'm going to do a radio show you know, with four parts and interview four different investors in my area. And now I'm going to be tight with them. Right. You know, they're going to know about me. Right. So you use it as, as not only it, – it's like pull marketing. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, and, and I'd, I'd say along the lines of what you just said about you know, talking to the investors in your area, I think it's a really good example. Um, the investors in your area, they are your advocates and they are, you know, they may be your competition, but, but they're the ones who are actually going to be sending deals your way when, when they have too many deals or when they run out of money or whatever the case. So you do want to be tight with those guys in your neighborhood, correct? Well, and it's more than that. Like if you're new, because I don't know, there's a wide range of people at bigger pockets. Sure. So if you're new, um, this might come to a, you know as a shock to you, but go join your local real estate investment club. Right. Like I did two years of business. Like my last two years in real estate were two six-figure years. I mean, like a, as an agent active, sure. you know. Or two six-figure years, and I did it all at my local investment clubs and speaking, like yeah. going to teach people how to do short sales or how to invest in foreclosures or how to flip properties. Be generous, yeah, because there's a one percent of us that are actually going to do it, right. and the rest are going to look up to you. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. You know, the, the people that that are out there that are the folks that people look up to, and so on and so forth. You and I have had some conversations. Typically, those are the guys who are out there. They're the ones who are visible, um, who who are engaging, who are talking. Like you said, whether it be online or, you know, at at clubs and, and, and meetings. Um, so I, I think that's great advice. Um, let's see. Um, in terms of using those channels, though, the fa the Facebook, the Twitter, y you know, there is value to it. We both know yeah. it. Frankly, I think you and I wouldn't be talking if not for, I believe, Twitter. I think I just you, found you. You reached out to me at, on Twitter while I was on vacation. I said, who is this guy? And then I went digging up on you. So there is that social connection. And the thing is, like, I don't want people to get lost in, like, for me, it's putting the cart before the horse. If yeah. you haven't built your content strategy, your lead capture strategy, yeah. you're going to Twitter. Yeah, maybe you'll get results. Sure. Okay, but 
the long term results because let's 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 tell the truth. You found me on Twitter, but where did you really found find me? You found my content, which led you to me on Twitter. Right, 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 right. So ultimately, then you know, in 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 terms of of the approach, it's start building content. Whether that's and that doesn't have to be a blog, a written blog. That could be a video. That could be you know a radio show or whatever. But just start talking, getting information out there. Showing people that you're an expert. Show them what you know and what you're good at and what you understand. Work on the other funnels. Engage people. And then they've got a place to, to dig you up, look you up, find out more about you. And then, you know, potentially do business with you, right? Yeah, like I, I look at Twitter as our phone line, right? Yeah. So you, you did your research and then you called me up on Twitter and, and, and here we are, right? right? So that's the thing. Have a, a full plan of how... All this stuff is going to lead back to you and make it real easy to get in touch with you. I yeah. think that's a big one. Make it real easy. Have your Skype. You know, have your Twitter. Have the places where people can get you, right. but go in it with a plan and make sure that everything's funneling. As you yeah. said, build your funnel. Yeah. Have your bigger pockets. Have your bigger pockets. <laughs> um, no, absolutely. You know, it's funny. There was a conversation on the site today that's that's been kind of blowing up. Somebody had asked about a squeeze page that he had set up. And he had set up the squeeze page, which was basically um, a contact form, enter your email address, talked a little bit about, you know, hey, we, are, we buy property, yada, yada. But that was it. There was no, who, I, who am I? You know, who are you talking to? How do you get in touch with me? Other than putting in your email address. You know, he didn't build credibility, and so everybody's, you know, telling him, look, you know, nobody wants to just throw an email address up and end up on somebody else's list, right? You need, you need to prove to people why they should be engaging, why they should be talking to you. You need to demonstrate something, give them something of value. Just throwing up a squeeze page anonymously isn't going to give people that confidence in you because they don't know who you are at that point, Correct. Well, here's what I think, because I, I, I'm i of the school of start something, right? Make sure you start something so you can get good at it, because the sooner you start, the sooner you get good at it. Yeah. So what we're looking at is, like, we're looking at a very small piece of this person's funnel. Did we find out, because I wasn't involved in this, sure. but where was he getting his traffic from? Right. Did they come through content and end up there? Because right. then he might get a 70% conversion sure. rate. Sure. You know, so let's look at the big picture. No, a squeeze page alone is not going to work. Right. But building that content, leading it back to that page, right. that's going to get you conversions to shizzle. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, the, in in this case, there wasn't the content. It was Nothing, just the huh? squeeze page. That ain't going to work, then. No, that ain't going to work. Right, <laughs> exactly. Cool, man. Well, listen, I, lots of cool, juicy stuff in here. You and I can talk for hours and hours about all this fun stuff, and I think we should. Um, let's, uh, you know, let's arrange to do it again and again and again. What do you think? Hey, bro, I, I want to tell you that I'm grateful that you're, you're allowing me to be here. Yeah. I'm grateful to hopefully share a lesson or two that might save somebody a little bit of trouble like I've had. <laughs> and, and, and I'm just thankful to, to just be able to connect because we're living in a world where we can really get connected if we use the tools correctly. Absolutely. And, and they, are, they are just that. They are tools. You actually have to do work besides just <laughs> hang out on social the media. The hammer, you know, the nails aren't going to nail themselves you in, know, right? Talking at conferences and doing social media isn't going to isn't a career, well, it is for some, but but being, you know, that it there's there's more to it. Um and no, it's 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 my pleasure. All right, well, Jonathan, um again, Jonathan Rivera, biggerpockets.com/users/realtechguy and it's the uh, Real Estate Referral Group on Facebook, I believe. Realestatereferralgroup.com. That domain leads right there. Fantastic. It's been a pleasure, man. We'll, we'll talk again soon. Awesome. Thank you. You got it. Take care. Biggerpockets.com.